Sensei. Intelligence. Expertise. What other doors could they close? Hey, how much am I Getting willing to give up? Stand a minute and are not committed to the struggle. Acquiescing to the struggle. They're committed. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Dr. Rick Wallace here. Uh, I contemplated uh, whether I would do this live or not. Uh, and I am going to do a live uh, broadcast at some point during the day. It's at roughly about six o'clock here uh, in Houston. And I've been determining if I was going to address this on a live. Uh, being that there's this issue uh, with my primary channel for the Odyssey Project uh, being taken down by YouTube for no reason. Um, there was no violation of any community guidelines. I simply posted a video of a mother spanking her child in school with a belt uh, that I spoke against, which community guidelines allow. I used it as a teaching moment. I used it to address much deeper issues. It was not the primary essence the, the the what 30 seconds of whatever it was that she actually popped him was not the essence of what the video was it was a much deeper deeper essence that i cover in my book born in captivity but anyway uh they initially said it was a warning uh that it wouldn't even count as a guideline strike but it would be count as a warning uh, and that if nothing, no subsequent violations happened in the next 90 days, it would be removed. And for four hours later, it was the site was down and we've been fighting to get it back up into this point. Uh, all we've gotten is we will be in contact with you. Uh, but so we are funneling um, more of the Odyssey stuff to the TVI uh, channel. Uh, until further notice, uh, if it ends up being a converted channel, it, it will be. I'm going to give attention to the things that need attention. And I'm going to serve my passion and my purpose in whatever avenues I have. Neota Yora, uh, if you watch this, we definitely, definitely need to talk and uh, continue the work that we're doing to make uh, this a non-issue moving forward. But I, I, I did want to take the time to address the issues with the NFL. Uh, we're going to talk about the Kaepernick thing because there's a new element and component to the story uh, that I want to touch on. We're going to talk about the suspension of Miles Garrett because of the fight on, I believe it was Thursday night uh, with Mason Rudolph and how that went down. But ultimately, racism within uh, the NFL. I don't want to do too much because you guys know I'm just this time last week, I was still in the hospital, had been there for a couple of by that time I was working on my third day uh, hot being hospitalized uh, with the, uh, severe hypertension and suffering from an hypertensive induced seizure, uh, which led to me being taken to the hospital. And I am still recovering from biting my tongue. And if you haven't ever bitten your tongue with that much force, just think about the times you nick it when you're eating too fast and it bleeds a little and how that feels. And then imagine biting through it where you literally have holes in it. Um, it it's not fun. Uh, but I eh, I can talk a little better than I have been able to. Uh, it's been it's been it's been a work in progress. But uh, the thing is, I'm on the mend. I uh, definitely will be sharing with you guys some things I'm doing as far as the uh, Master Fitness uh, 21 60 Day uh, Holistic Health and Healing Challenge. Uh, something that obviously I've been motivated to take part in. Um, and so I'm uh, excited about that. So everybody stay tuned as for as learning more about that. There's a lot that's going to pop off as we get ready to move into 2020. Uh, and we're taking things by storm, by force, and by a pure sense of relentless pursuit. 
with that being said, uh, specifically, I'm going to talk to you today about these two issues and how we approach things. And I'm going to start in a very weird or unique place. And that is the detriment of symbolic pursuit, uh, the danger that symbolism poses to black progress. Now, from a co concept or theoretic perspective, uh, symbolism has purpose. Symbolism is not in and of itself a bad thing. Symbolism is the representation of something greater. The problem with symbolism in the black community is symbolism has become the end game. We celebrate symbols as if they were the actual victory. We separate, and this is why black faces in high places have become such a problem. We see things such as a black president. We see things such as black billionaires. We see things such as a number of exorbit exorbitantly rich blacks, which represent a very small percentage of the total black population, uh, less than 5%. And we think we've arrived. We have learned to live they, uh, 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 vicariously through the success of others. Um, the symbol, whether it's Kaepernick, whether it's uh, Michael Jordan, whether it's Tiger Woods, whether it's Serena Williams, whether it's Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, Beyonce, whoever, the symbol is now the point of focus and it is uh, for the most part the designation or the staple of the lie that we've lived because we've been t we've been told that it's all good because it's all good because the number one tennis player the number one female athlete in the world is black uh the president of the united states was black for eight years um you know we've got kids coming out of the marcy projects in in brooklyn that are billionaires we, we we've got we've got we've got you know we've got all, all of this success but actually it's not all this this is a handful of people that have given up a great deal of who they are whether they want to admit it or not to assimilate into a system that has given them a pathway to the success that you now see what I can tell you personally from a person who has experienced a certain level of success financially and in certain industries and when that success was my focus and my focus wasn't my passion, my purpose or my people, it came easy. And I don't mean I laid down and it just rolled up on me. I mean that if I wanted something, I went after it and a lot of doors were there and, and, and people who didn't look like me had no problem problem opening those doors for me. Uh, the moment that I couldn't shake the emptiness in my, in, 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 I want to say maybe my early to mid thirties, I couldn't shake the emptiness. I couldn't say, man, I'm, I'm chasing all this stuff. I'm getting all this stuff. I'm doing this crazy stuff that nobody ever thought I would do that I didn't think I would do. And I'm miserable. And I come to the conclusion that it wasn't about me that life isn't about getting things life is about having an impact and i decided that that's what i was going to do the game changed the game changed and i didn't know i didn't notice it initially because there was still so many things that i could do but then i started to realize friends have become enemies resources have become liabilities and and and, and so forth and I start to realize when you really start to make your presence felt in this world as a black man for black people, things change. And thinking you're going to become a billionaire doing that uh, isn't, isn't truly being honest with yourself and being realistic. So we see a symbol that represents something for us that we can never have, but we're OK with it because we've learned how to live vicariously through the symbol. 
The symbol was simply meant to inspire. The symbol was simply meant to say, here is something to aim for. This is how we are going to do it. The symbol has to be a representation of something greater or the symbol becomes a detriment. I'm saying all that to say that we're spending a lot of time focusing on Colin Kaepernick specifically and missing the greater point. And no matter where you stand on this, I am disappointed to a certain extent, not greatly because I don't put all of my hopes into any one individual. Uh, I wake up every morning with the goal to do the best that I possibly can to be the strongest I possibly can to be the most impactful and to connect with other people who are doing the same. And then we let the chips fall where they may. I'm not looking for someone to rescue me. I'm not looking for uh, some Messiah. I'm not looking for the next Malcolm, the next Marcus, the next Martin, or, or the next Nat Turner, whoever. I am looking to be someone who took what they gave me and did something with it and then gave it to others to do even greater things. That's my goal. If I haven't touched lives of men, especially who are at some point in their lives achieving greater than I've done, I felt. If to look at what I have done as an author, as a speaker, as a businessman, uh, uh, and whatever else I've done, as an academician or a scholar, what, what, whatever it is that you want to classify me as and how you personally see me, if I, ne if, if, if I am it, I fail. If I remain the anomaly, I fail. If you can't look at me and see the quintessential nature of black men, then I failed. My goal shouldn't want to be to be elevated and say, hey, man, this guy is exceptional and extraordinary. My goal should want to be that I have been so impactful in the world that there are many men like me because I was impactful in the world. There are many men greater than me because I, I was impactful in the world. And so when we start to live through the symbol, when we start to see something and we are just happy, but and, and literally look at look, look at how we relate to our celebrities. It's because they live lives that we never feel we we're going to live. And they represent what we really believe deep down inside we'll never have. So we live it through them. And we have become accustomed to doing that to the level that whenever there's something they're going through, we go through it with them and we'll fight and defend them to the end, knowing they're wrong, simply because we're that invested in them. And what we don't realize is it's great to have symbols. It's great to have people you can look at and say, man, they did something special, but it means absolutely nothing if it doesn't move you to do something greater. Let's go back to something outside of celebrities in the sense of athletes and entertainers. Let's talk about some people who have gained celebrity through the greatest of sacrifices. Let's look at my, my, my hero, Malcolm. Not perfect by any means, but if you are striving to be an impact in the black community and you want your manhood to be out front, Malcolm is not a bad image to look at and say, that's the kind of dude I want to be. But here's what I think a lot of us did. And I am getting to this NFL thing. Trust me. Here's what I think a lot of us did. A lot of us look at Marcus, Malcolm, Medgar, Martin, and, 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 and we see these bunions of strength, manhood, fortitude, and we, we, we see them, and they become our heroes. Nothing wrong with that. Here's the thing. By the very nature of growth, expansion, and progression, if, no, if they haven't inspired anyone in 50 years plus, with, with, with most and with Marcus even longer, if they haven't inspired any men to transcend them, then, 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 then I think that's a failure. And I don't think it's totally on them. I think they lived their lives. I think that we have this 
complex where it's easier to worship them than to model them. It's easier to sit up and say, man, you know, and the thing is, we didn't need another Malcolm. We needed a, a thousand men just like Malcolm. That is far more frightening to the establishment than one guy on his game. Because see, you see what they do to one guy. When it becomes a movement, when it becomes a standard, when it becomes something especially uh, uh, pervasive within the mindset of black men, that we're going to stand, that we're going to defend, that we're going to live, that we're going to own our own, own, that we're going to love our women, that we're going to protect our children, that we're going to push forward, that we will with our lives defend and protect that which we have been given charge. That is frightening that they'll give money to athletes because they'll blow most of it. 75% of athletes in the NFL are uh, broke within three years of retirement. Pretty much the same thing in the NBA. That's just a part of it. So what am I saying? I'm saying we need to get past the symbolism. What Cap did was great, but it didn't inspire anything beyond rooting for Cap. Cap, we just want them to leave Cap alone. We just want them to give Cap a job. Here's what happens, though. Somebody like Cap, I actually think this is me personally, and I could be dead wrong with this because it's speculation. I believe that Cap got this new girlfriend who was black and up on her black history game. She broke him off and told him what what was really what it what was really like because he was he was he's a mulatto and he was reared by a white family didn't experience most of it you know obviously there's a certain thing you're not gonna get away from no matter how little black you are if they sense it you're gonna get it because you're not white okay but a lot of stuff he didn't have to experience because he came up in a different environment okay but she broke it down to him she showed him she made him aware of the things that were going on police brutality. Uh, how many unarmed black men are killed annually and, and all of this other stuff. So he, I believe he really took that to heart. I believe that's a part of him that needed to identify with the black side anyway. So he took that to heart. I think he stepped out there. I think something is simply, man, I ain't standing up. No darn gone uh, uh, national anthem. Uh, and it was just a personal thing. He was chilling. He wasn't trying to really do nothing. And it became a thing. And then that was a part of him that says, look, I'm not backing down. And I think we got behind that. And I think there's nothing wrong with getting behind that. But it should have inspired a movement among us to do something within ourselves. Not go to work and not, not do something at work or whatever, but do something. It didn't. We got caught up in what he was doing. We, we rooting for him. We're, we're checking to see, is this going to be the week he's not going to kneel? You know, he, and, and he, he, he made some move. He went from sitting to kneeling after talking with uh, someone who was a, a, a veteran and they came to the idea that one way that he could respect veterans while still making his statement was taking a knee. Okay, they didn't like that. Here's the thing. At some point, Colin Kaepernick realized what I realized. This shit comes as a, at a cost. He's out of the league. He's thinking, man, you know, I threw for 18 touchdowns and four interceptions my last season. I had one of the highest ratings in, in the league amongst active quarterbacks. Somebody's going to sign me. Nobody signs him. Everybody starts saying, wait a minute, something's going on. Here's the thing. At some point, Colin Kaepernick got people in his ear because he had the ear of the black people. Uh, when you see D. Ray McPherson, sitting there that should tell you something uh and you don't know who d-ray mcpherson is look up black lives matter and see what's going on with that but really do the research on it not the superficial stuff do the research on it and see the damage that 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 organization did um from ferguson on out and uh we can talk about that one day but anyway when you see him hanging out with those cats, you say, okay, now it's starting to be about the money. Okay. 
what got me was, and I, I have no problem with him getting paid because he put his career on the line. Here's where he lost me. He lost me when he signed the big deal with Nike and got quiet. When's the last time you've seen any major statement, social statement in the favor of those who struggle, the blacks, the people he was standing up for and speaking for and kneeling for when he was in the league? We have his back, but we've not holding him accountable. And that's what happens as well. We have a poor record of holding those who say they represent us accountable for, for a certain level of behavior and a way of carrying, carrying themselves and the adherence to a certain level of protocols in their behavior, in their movement. He got a big deal from Nike. He's set. So he's not hurting financially. He won a un, undisclosed settlement from the NFL for collusion. Um, so that's that. We have to get away from the symbolism and we have to start understanding that if we don't aspire for what the symbol, symbol actually represents, we've lost. The symbol isn't the end game. It's simply a marker. It is, and the problem is we have made it a, vica a vacant, vicarious marker, meaning that we're living through it and it has no true value for us. We've got to get away from that. Now on to this whole thing from, from yesterday where the NFL uh, set him up and I have posted on the Odyssey site, an article that breaks down how this was bull crap from the jump. Uh, the NFL set up a workout for Cap on a day that's obviously really, truly not about him making the team. Um, they do it in a way where they don't want anybody filming it but them. Uh, they don't want his people filming it. They don't want the press there. They don't want the public there. What's going to happen with that in case you don't get what's going on? The NFL has always been about transparency. One of the biggest days in the NFL year, in a calendar year in the NFL, is Combine, where everybody who's trying out to make a team, good or bad, shows up. They've been invited, and they've got this thing, and they're showing what they run in the 40, their skill sets, what they're good at, what they're strong at, and everybody sees it. So, uh, and I mean, it's it's televised nationally and probably internationally at this point. They didn't want any cameras. Why? Because what they were going to do is they weren't going to count on him to fail. They were going to only show you the failures and nobody's perfect. So there may be a couple of miscues, but from what I heard, I didn't watch it. But from what I heard from some people, I definitely trust uh who, who, who are in sports, he killed this workout. He absolutely killed it. Okay. And now it's going to be public record that he killed it. So he's applied some oppression, but it shows that uh, that um, it was done for the wrong reasons. It wasn't about getting him in because they didn't want it. He changed the location the day of the workout so that he could invite the public and the media and they showed up and they they filmed it and they showed and from the excerpts i did see you know he, he seemed pretty sharp for a guy that's been out for three years uh, and so the question's still up there i don't think he's ever going to play in the league because i think that it's that serious for them for him not to uh but i don't think that the league will fully recover from this and i really couldn't care less and i'm a huge fan of the sport uh, I wouldn't, if knowing what I know now, I would not put my kids in. As a matter of fact, my sons have been banned from football. Um, but, you know, luckily I haven't had to this point any um, negative issues as far as brain is concerned. And I've actually had my brain scanned. So, you know, I'm grateful for that. But um, I still love the sport. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a man. And deep down inside, there's a need for physicality. And so I enjoy it. Um, but I, I'm not weeping for the NFL at all. I, I would love to see uh, black men who make up 76 percent of the talent in the league uh, to start their own league, uh, to start something where the talent is, uh, owns the league. I mean, owns the league. I think that you can't represent that much of a market and not have ownership. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. 
But anyway, here's here's this. Racism is going to be present when your owner's average age is 72. Meaning that the average age of the owners in the NFL puts them at a point when they could literally call you a nigger and nothing would happen. They, they were alive during that time that they could literally do that. They could literally sit up, talk about lynching you and have you lynched and probably nothing would happen. And so that creates a problem. It's a good old boy establishment. Uh, the late owner uh, of the Houston, Texas, Bob McNair, went, uh, was caught saying we don't want the uh, inmates running the asylum uh, when this first kicked off. And so we understand that. What, what am I getting at? Well, I'm getting at this. We can't expect anything from the NFL except who they are. I'm not really going all out uh, for Cap because I think that he bailed. I think he took the money and bailed. Again, I have no problem with him taking the money, but I haven't heard his voice. You had a voice. And it's not just about having a voice for advancing yourself. It's about having a voice for those who can't speak for themselves. And yes, that comes with some setbacks. That comes with some sacrifices. That comes with a number of things that are not necessarily comfortable for you. But that's something that you took on to yourself when you decide to make this move. But when it comes to the NFL, they're screwing it. And it is what it is. You have to make your mind up of how you're going to approach things. What are we going to give our attention to? What are we going to give our money to? What are we going to support? Um, but that's that part. Let's move on to something else. Uh, this past Thursday, Miles Garrett uh, got into a scuffle at the end of the game. I mean, literally eight seconds before the game was over, got into a scuffle with the backup quarterback for uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, I believe his name is Mason Rudolph. And the part that was initially showed that night was Miles Garrett, which if you've ever studied this guy, I study him a lot because he's highly cerebral. Dude is off the chart thinker. Love him for that nature. But because of that, he's gotten a reputation for not being hard, not being soft. And I mean, for being soft, and not being hard, not being a tough guy. Uh, he's a freak of nature, like six, four, six, five, two seventy something, something like that. Solid guy, two eighty seven, something like that. And just a freak of nature. And for a defensive lineman, he's that new age defensive lineman where it's not a lot of body fat. He's literally a freak of nature. And so, uh, what you see is Miles snatching Rudolph's hat, Miles Garrett snatching Rudolph's hat, helmet off, and then getting into a scuffle and swinging over somebody that was between them and hitting uh, Rudolph in the head with his own helmet. But it was the cushion part, the end opening part of the helmet, not the crown. But he swung it and hit him. And a, a small melee broke out. Uh, the next day, everybody was calling for Garrett's head. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, I think Miles Garrett's been suspended indefinitely, definitely uh, to the end of the season, and it may roll into next season. Um, Ponzi, which is the, one of the, uh, maybe even be the center uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but he's definitely a lineman, black guy. He gets suspended three games because he came to the defense of uh, Rudolph and punched and kicked Garrett. Uh, another guy came up from the, the team that uh, Garrett is on and pushed Rudolph down. After the fact, he got suspended one game. Guess who didn't get suspended? Rudolph. What do you think the chances are of somebody being so upset who has a reputation for not being a tough guy? What, what, what's, the, what's the chance that this guy just out of nowhere rips this guy's head off and goes melee for no reason at all? But here we are again. Now, it seems that for whatever reason, Pittsburgh quarterbacks are like Kevlar because we know Big Ben got two rape cases that just disappeared. No suspensions, no nothing. OK, but anybody else behavior unbecoming and their suspensions. But OK, we're talking about Rudolph. Here. We're going to leave Ben where he's at for now. We go back and we look, we find that when we look at the tapes which the NFL should have had available to them when they made the decision on the suspensions. 
not based off of public perception or public opinion, but the actual facts. What happened is there are two things that happened. This guy was first trying to rip Garrett's helmet off while they were on the ground. That's the that that's one part. The other part is he kicks him in the groin. And there are both pictures that show this. There are both pictures that show this. He's the one guy that didn't get a, a suspension or a fine. And this is so common. But I, I, I'm not even tripping on that. The NFL is going to do what the NFL is going to do. And as long as black athletes keep playing helpless and not understanding that there is no value to the league without you, that you possess the value, then there's always going to be a problem. Here's, here's my problem. My problem is all the black sports commentators and uh, analysts that came and immediately called for the head of, uh, of Garrett without getting the facts together, without being solid, without, be, you know, number one, how things play out. They would not have been as aggressive if it was a white guy. And that's my call, Stephen A. Smith. I love Shannon Sharp. I think he's highly biased when it comes to my dude, LeBron, whom I love. But uh, Shannon is highly biased when it comes to LeBron to the point that you can't even take what he says serious. You have to go fact check him because uh, it's always one sided. But other than that, he's normally good at calling the spade a spade when racism is at play. So what I want to believe with Shannon is he didn't have all of this. And my question is why? Uh, you have access to way more footage than I do. And why such a rush to judgment? Why calling for, it's absolutely no read. Somebody kicks you in the head, tries to rip your helmet off. What are you going to do? Somebody kicks you in your balls. And, in, 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 and ladies, that's something you'll never understand. I can tell you, just like we'll never understand what it means to be in labor, you'll never understand what it feels like to get your balls thumped. I mean, just thumped. And to have somebody kick you in your balls, it's a natural instinctive response to retaliate. Am I saying that I condone violence? I'm saying if somebody comes at me and puts their hands on me, they have to expect that I'm going to do the same to them. This is something that totally kills me. Tupac said in uh, Better Day, his Better Days uh, uh, do, do release, uh, which was actually released after his death. He says, niggas always love to scream. Niggas always scream peace after they start some shit. Excuse my language. But, and we see that all the time with white people. I'm going to throw something. Then I'm going to scream bloody murder and, hey, let's work it out. Hey, man, chill, chill. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, this is something I taught my kids. This is something I taught my kids. You do not get to determine how someone retaliates to your aggression. You can't say I pushed you so you can only push me back because that push could very well get you killed. You don't get to be aggressive towards someone and dictate how they respond. We need to stop pushing that and we need to stop expecting that when you because I promise you, if you violate me or my family, there's no end. I'm going that I'm not willing to go to to destroy you. I'm not trying to do tit for tat. I'm trying to do you so bad for what you've done to me and mine that anybody that follows you knows it's not worth it. And that's the same mentality we need to have in our communities. We need to have that that, that 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 type of mentality that if you do something out of line in this community, black or white or any other racial uh, race or ethnicity, if you violate anyone in this community, what's going to happen to you is going to be so bad that nobody after you will do it. Do what you did. That's the mindset. So I have no problem with what Garrett did. I have absolutely no problem. He should have whooped his ass with that helmet. But even more so, he needs to understand that he's in a system where while he's being paid millions, he's earning people billions and he is an asset and a value and a part of a market 
that he can have greater control in. That's what we're missing here is that we are still study trying to get them to accept us in something we're creating. We've been doing that from day one. Accept us in something we're creating. It's time out for that. Look, I'm going to get out of here. I got a, a session I've got to get ready for, but I just wanted to do that. Uh, so hopefully I'll have something where I'll be sitting in front of you doing a live stream. I, I think that I can handle it. Um, there are still some words that cause some problems, but nowhere close to how it has been. So I'm feeling good about that. I want to thank you guys for uh, stopping in. Uh, share the link. Share the link, please. Uh, and finally, we are still in need of your support. I can't say that enough. Click the link. Uh, go to the site and give or give through our Cash App account. But we definitely need you to give. We're pushing to raise five thousand uh, this week. We spend way more than that, but we are looking to raise five thousand specifically. That's the goal. I've never hit a goal in this. Now, I've just been persistent and gotten some things done. Uh, but this is one place where I've never hit the goal I've set. The one place. Because I don't control it. I can't get people to do it. And so I'm going to be very, very persistent this week. Very, very persistent. You can click the link and go to the site. See some of the work we do. Uh, while that's going on, if you know some people who need the services we offer, Reach out, but we need your support. So we're asking you to give. I don't care if it's $5, $10, $25. Maybe there's somebody out there who can give the entire $5,000. Uh, but whatever it is, that's our goal to hit this by Friday. And I'm challenging you to step up and be a part of it. But I hope you got something out of what I left you. You guys have a great day. I'm out. interrupted there so I'm gonna try to finish what uh, I was I was trying to get done look we have to do a better job of protecting our kids monitoring their phones looking at what they're doing on social media limiting their screen time I watch uh, situations where I see kids literally on their phone I mean, constantly, and it, and it's not helping. Parents, we're we're bad too. I've seen families out to eat, and nobody's engaging each other. Everybody's on their device, and that's a whole nother thing that we'll talk about in another day. But you gotta understand that the internet and social media is fertile, uh, fertile soil and, and breeding ground for predators. And it's easy to groom a child. It's easy to throw bait out there with little risk. And these babies are getting offered money, gifts, travel opportunities, and they're biting on it, and they're disappearing forever. What you have to understand is sex trafficking is the second most lucrative industry on a global scale behind arms dealing. It's more profitable than the drug industry, the drug business, the illegal drug business. And these babies are being kidnapped, and within hours, they're out of your city. Within, with, within a matter of a half a day or so, they're out of your state. In a few days, they may even be out of the country. And the chance of finding them within a few hours after they've been abducted is little or nothing because these people are so systematic and precise with what they're doing. And so um, what I'm saying is we've got to find a way to do a better job. We've got to find a way to love on our children. Look, I'm going to get off, um, get off of here, uh, get my head right. But it's just something that was on my mind. Uh, you guys take care. All right.
make this record hot. Conceptual Jay sounded better than Jay. People talk Real about talk, it. I ain't throwing shots. All of the elements Certain they things say. Things say. Intelligence. Bring me Expertise. What other doors could they close? Hey, how much am I Can't willing to give up? Locked. And are not committed to the struggle. Acquiescing to the struggle. They're top. committed. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in right now. Thanks, first of all. Second of all, I just need to really iterate the fact that we need your help. We need your support right now. We are pushing to hit a goal of $25,000 by the end of this week. That, If we hit that goal, it'll help us cover our uh, goals for the first quarter. It'll help us consistently continue to do what we're doing with Black Men Lead, Restoring Ghettos Forgotten Daughters, our new program for, uh, providing mental uh, health services and resources, and so much more that we've been doing consistently. Again, we need your support like we've never needed, needed it before. Thank you in advance. You have a great day.